been trying to play around with my setup a little bit <laughs> but I haven't got enough lighting coming from the front from that window because it's, the sun doesn't quite hit it as well as it does this one and if I open this blind if I open this curtain you can't see behind me um, it's just like a like some angelic <laughs> heavenly light swirling around me um, but yeah it's the only reason it looks like this now and it's not quite how I want is because A, there's not enough lighting coming from the front and B, my phone doesn't have a high enough dynamic range like a camera does um, in order to catch like the the nice yellow because it looks a lot brighter in the camera but I can't get that darker without making my face too dark so I've had to like there's not enough the sensor's not big enough, the settings aren't good, the whatever. Not good enough to capture the full spectrum. And yeah, I mean, it's obviously a little change when I get a good camera. Because for some reason, my D5200, my Nikon DSLR, is terrible at taking video and I have no idea why. It's a bit more of a gaming focused day to day. And I was reading the forum, the Game Quitters forum, while I was doing my journal. And I came across something that reminded me about what my life was like two years ago, pretty much to the day when I was a Twitch streamer. <laughs> Back in the days, uh, I was pretty successful at Twitch. Like, not like ninja levels of success, but in terms of my growth, it was incredibly fast. I had hundreds of people um, like watching me and I think my record was like 800 and I'd only been streaming for three weeks at the time. I was getting like 50 or 60 people coming to watch me every time I went live. I made over a hundred dollars in my first month ever, which is like incredible. But it also reminded me of why that time has such a negative memory for me. It harbors so much pain, so much regret that <clears throat> whenever I think about it, I can only think about that time I don't think about all the good stuff that happened at the time and I was working as a restaurant manager down in Cardiff for a new starter restaurant that my friend had opened he asked me if I wanted to come down and help him and I pretty much jumped on the idea I was like yeah hell yeah I want to do this I want to start a restaurant fuck yeah but soon after I realized that like we weren't going to be opening anytime soon we were delayed a lot we had financial problems and so I had all this free time I was still getting paid and nothing to do and I decided to stream on Twitch because why not I was playing video games and it wasn't a problem for me I was <laughs> I had the like the space I had the schedule the equipment everything I could get it done and I started streaming this game called Slay the Spire which had just come out and after playing it for quite a while I became pretty good and I decided to have a go at speedrunning it now, if you knew what this game was like, you would knew that there's no way you can really speedrun the game, or at least on the surface. It's like randomly generated, every time it's different, and it's just a pointless exercise. But I gave it a go, posted on Reddit, I got a time of like 16 minutes or something for completing the run. Got some traction, and some people mentioned that this was pretty cool. And so I kept improving, kept improving, was getting like 5 viewers a day or something um, from that Reddit post. And I had some followers and then I got um, a 9 minute 30 run or 9 minutes 11 or something. I was still on YouTube <laughs> and this almost went like semi-viral I guess. My YouTube video got 60,000 views, um, I got hundreds of upvotes on Reddit, I, my follow account exploded and all of a sudden I was like inundated with the people coming to watch me and before I knew it I was... Um, not partnered. I was affiliated on Twitch and I was able to get subscriptions. I was streaming every day. People were loving me. People were tuning into my content and things were going great. But then it was, it took a bit of a, like a rough turn because I started realizing that in order to get the viewers, I had to accommodate the American audience. And so that meant for me living in the UK that I had to switch up my streaming schedule so that I was streaming pretty much like late in the, in the evening and early morning and all this streaming all this gaming took such a big toll on my 
my daily life, my routine, my health, my sleep, that I just sort of spiraled down and my gaming addiction took hold. And I remember distinctly a point during this time on Twitch. I was about a month in. Um, Twitch was going well, but my mental and phys physical health was suffering. And I woke up about 12 p.m. I <laughs> went into the kitchen, got a tub of ice cream out of the freezer, had like a third of that for breakfast while watching YouTube, along with a can of like squirty cream, just <laughs> into my mouth. And to get to my computer, I had to step over bags of trash, takeaway boxes, pizza cartons, everything like that I just dropped there that I ate on my desk. Like I'd eat it at my desk, order takeaway, eat it on my desk and just drop it behind me without even thinking about it because that wasn't visible. It's like if like you can see the floor isn't visible now. Imagine that just filled with trash and that, that was my life. <laughs> for, for a few days at least I was walking of I was walking through trash to get to my computer to stream for 12 hours every day until 5 a.m. I'd only take away an ice cream every single day and eventually I just broke pretty much just snapped in two <laughs> and I announced to my stream that I was quitting Twitch at least for the foreseeable future I was quitting video games for a while to kind of get my head straight and yeah I quit gaming I did another detox from gaming and things went pretty well I started taking an interest in hiking again in photography and music meeting more friends and having more of an interest in my life and I eventually recovered from that but it made me realize that that whole year that I spent in Cardiff working on this restaurant building something great it's now actually a really successful restaurant and I'll go into the story of why I lost my job at that restaurant later on in another video. But that whole year, I can only think of that time on Twitch, those few days or that month. The entire experience was defined by that moment. And I really do regret it. It's one of the few regrets I genuinely have is not making the most of that year. And... There's not a lot I can do about it now. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it, in fact, except just move on and accept that it happened and allow myself to experience those feelings, let them come into me and just let them move on and realize that the past is the past. I'm not there now, but in those two years, I've come on a considerable amount in my life. And yeah, it's... While it is a regret, and while it is like filled with pain that time, it does fill me with an enormous amount of gratitude for what I have now, an enormous sense of growth and achievement for everything I've done. But yeah, I thought it was a thought it'd be a nice thing to touch on in this this video, and just kind of talk about it and reflect as I'm coming up to thirty days into this detox and seeing how much has changed in my life. But have you ever, like, for those people who are watching, have you ever tried streaming on Twitch if you still play video games? Or have you ever looked back on a time only a year or two in the past and thought how differently things would be now if you didn't have that, that setback, that year of, <laughs> year of stagnant growth, no progress? How differently would your life look? But at the same time, you might argue that your life wouldn't be in the position you're in now if you didn't have that period of growth. So there's always two sides to the same coin, but as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.